Hey everyone, and thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to do something that I've wanted to do for a while, which is to show you how to play all the guitar parts in Bury the Light. Now this isn't going to be a complete playthrough of the entire song, nor an analysis of the production or the composition. However, I am going to show you how to play every guitar part exactly as it was recorded on the album. This song is mostly based around the key of D minor, but it also touches on D Phrygian and D Dorian. For this reason, almost the entire song was recorded on a six string guitar tuned down to drop D. For a little bit of extra weight in the choruses, I doubled the six string guitar part an octave lower on just the bass notes on an extended range guitar. On the album version of the song, I recorded everything through my Kemper profiler. And just to make things a little bit more accessible and to honor the man who mixed it himself, I'm going to be using Neural DSP's Nolly Archetype, just to show you how you can do everything here in the box on your own if you'd like to. So most of you probably know this story already, but for those who might not, I'm just going to quickly retell it. When I was first asked by Capcom to write this song, one of the first requests they had was no, no distorted guitars in the verses, only to save that for the chorus sections. And their reason for this was because they wanted to represent Virgil's character in the music and the arrangement as well. So what that means is that Virgil is very cool and calm in the way that he walks, but then he can attack with great speed at any moment. So what they wanted to do is reserve that energy for the chorus and the cool, calm Virgil for the, for the verses. At first, I was a little taken back by this because I really wanted to write a super heavy and very energetic song from start to finish. But as I started diving in into more of the song, into more of the composition, I realized how right Capcom was in making that call. And I think it really helped shine through as a character piece even more, having the arrangement reflect his personality a little bit more like that as well. This brings us to our first section, which is going to be the first verse. Now this part is extremely simple and was recorded on an acoustic guitar in the studio. However, for this version, I'm just gonna show you how to play it on a six string uh, standard electric. There's really no reason to switch over unless you're recording this in the studio, but for the sake of playing along live, I'm just gonna show you on an electric. <laughs> So that's it for the first and second verse. There actually is another clean guitar part in the third verse, but I want to save that for later because it's played verbatim the exact same later in the bridge with some other parts featured with it that I can show you. So let's move on to the first chorus. This part can be broken up into four different sections. There's the six string guitar part, which is playing the power chords. There is the extended range guitar part, which is doubling the root notes of those an octave lower. Then there are two other guitar parts, which are a little bit more buried in the mix, but still add a whole lot to the, uh, the overall vibe of the chorus. There is a mid-range guitar part, which is basically outlining uh, the chord structure with some really cool voice leading involved. And then there's another guitar part, which is kind of meant for just darkening. It's a little bit of a washed out lead, but as you'll see, it really adds a lot to the chorus. I'll play these all separately first so you can see and hear how they're played. And then I'll add them all together so you can see how they come together to make one part.
we come to the second chorus. So again, much like the first chorus, there is the six string part playing the power chords, there is the extended range guitar part playing those root notes an octave lower, and then we have three other guitar parts featured in this section. Two of them are kind of similar. One of them is eighth notes strummed in the mid voicings just to add a little bit of air to the power chords. There is another section which is a little bit more syncopated but again played on the two high strings just adding again more voicing structure to these chords. And then on top of that there is a quasi lead section that's a little bit buried in the mix. We don't want it to be featured like a solo but it is adding a bit of that movement and a bit of that uh, color to the chords up high. We're adding you know sevenths and you know suspended fourths and seconds and stuff like that. And then we'll join all the parts up so you can see how they're played together to form one chorus. Now that we've gone through all the chorus material, we come to the bridge, and it features a few parts. It features the clean guitar part that's also featured in the third verse, and then we have a little small open D string section that's featured on the six string guitar that just repeats a three note pattern over and over again until the 16 bar phrase completes. And those two guitar parts actually make up the majority of the bridge until we start to get to the build up that brings us into the third chorus. And whenever we start the build-up, we're just introducing two new guitar parts. We're just introducing the six-string guitar playing power chords, and again, the extended range guitar doubling those notes an octave lower. Those two new guitar parts start out as syncopated rhythms on power chords, and it eventually turns into straight eighth note palm mutes. As those palm mutes go on, they become more and more open, creating more and more energy to send us into the third chorus. And now we've come to my favorite part of the entire song, which is the third and final chorus. Again, much like the first and second choruses, this is built up of multiple guitar layers coming together as a whole to really make this the, the, the main impact that it brings to the song. The first part we're going to go over for this section is the main six string guitar part. I actually recorded the low and high guitar parts on the six string separately. That was only for the sake of being able to mix the voicings a little bit more independently, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to show you how they were written and how they're supposed to be played live.
And just like in the first and second chorus, this also features the extended range guitar doubling all those notes an octave lower. One of the layers in the third and final chorus is sort of a quasi-guitar lead part that was really just meant for the sake of color. So what you'll hear in the final mix is a auto pan left and right section of a guitar tapping part. Now that we're well into the third chorus, we're reaching the guitar solo, which is the end of the song. By now you've already heard Victor sing the recapitulation of the Devil Trigger melody, which is featured throughout the entire third chorus. As a matter of fact, it's the only reason the third chorus was written the way it was, was because I wanted it to be built around this fact that a little bit of Nero's DNA lives inside of Virgil's song and vice versa, whichever way you want to think about it. And I really wanted to play this on guitar, and I thought one of the only ways to really get there appropriately was to have it featured as a guitar solo and then work my way into that moment. So we have something that's a little bit more flashy at first, but not too difficult. And then we go into this melody at the end. <laughs> 